Hi, and thank you for watching. If you've been watching some of the Watchmen channels, you would have seen that we have recently passed a very important date. That date was January 11th, and what makes this day so special is the fact that every solar and lunar eclipse that occurred before this day, all the way back to the time of the creation, has a paired eclipse that is mirrored around January 11th, 2024. It is truly as if we are looking at a heavenly menorah, where January 11th is positioned at the center, with all eclipses that have ever occurred positioned on the left, and all future eclipses that will occur positioned on the right, with perfect symmetry around January 11th this year. This is truly an amazing feature of God's heavenly timepiece that was recently discovered. We are now positioned in a time between two sets of eclipses that are positioned closest to this date, and from what I understand, the solar eclipse of October 14th, 2023, and the lunar eclipse of October 29th, were the last eclipses that would form part of the ages preceding this point in time, that would from a biblical perspective at least seem to carry great importance. In Joel chapter 2, we read about two eclipses that will occur before the terrible day of the Lord. And I believe the last two eclipses of 2023 are the two eclipses that are referred to in Joel chapter 2. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. We have further seen how the time frame of 1,290 days associated with normal daily life being removed and the abominable substance that was introduced into people's bodies perfectly fits into the time frame leading up to the solar eclipse of October 14th that marked this period's end, just as described in Daniel 12 and Matthew 24. January 11th is also 2,300 days away from the Revelation 12 sign which occurred on September 23rd, 2017, and this would seem to link it to the period that is mentioned in Daniel 8 of 2,300 days. Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto the certain saint which spake, How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? And he said unto me, Unto two thousand and three hundred days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. It is also interesting that those who are preparing to rule the world during the last seven years, which is also referred to as Daniel's 70th week, have already begun counting down to the end of this time. And if the final seven years have commenced in the eyes of those who serve the enemy, what should we think of the time that we are currently living in? The question then is, why have we seen all of these incredible signs but the day of the Lord has not yet started, and things would seem to be progressing as they have for the past three years at least. Given that we find ourselves in a window of time between two sets of eclipses that are mirrored around January 11th, and that Joel tells us that the terrible day of the Lord occurs after a solar eclipse that is followed by a lunar eclipse, and given the importance of January 11th as far as heavenly signs are concerned, and this date serving as a division between past and future heavenly signs, it stands to reason that the day of the Lord has to arrive before the next set of eclipses occur, and the first of these set for March 24th. Also, there will not be another set of eclipses in the order mentioned by Joel until February 2026. So what are we to make of our current situation, and when can we expect the day of the Lord to arrive, and for Him to gather in His harvest? There is one obvious clue that the Bible provides, and I believe this also points to the first opportunity after January 11th, where we could expect the arrival of the bridegroom. Could I be wrong? Absolutely. I am simply looking at possibilities, combining the information that God's word provide, and aligning that with what we see happening in the world around us. For the good man is not at home, he has gone a long journey. He hath taken a bag of money with him, and will come home at the day appointed. In Proverbs 7 verse 20, as I've discussed in previous videos, we are told that the good man who went on a long journey and who has taken a bag of money with him is expected to return, according to this passage, on a full moon. The Hebrew word that is translated to the day appointed in English means at the time of the full moon. The next full moon occurs on January 25th, which just happens to coincide with Tuba Shavat, or the new year for trees. Tuba Shavat is also associated with the almond tree, which is among the first to awake from its winter sleep. The word for almond in Hebrew means to watch or to wake, 
and if the heavenly menorah of January 11th, consisting of all past heavenly signs that are all mirrored around this date, was not enough to tell us that the day of our marriage to the bridegroom is almost upon us, the fact that God chose to decorate the menorah with almond blossoms should remove any doubt regarding the day that our Heavenly Father is pointing us to with this newly discovered attribute of the heavens. Moreover the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast seen well, for I will hasten my word to perform it. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. Also, when we consider Passover, it always occurs on a full moon, fourteen days after the beginning of a new year in the first month Nisan. And in this sense, we have another matching pattern, with January 11th being marked by a new moon, and serving as a marker that ends all previous heavenly signs, but also starting the time of all future eclipses. And with Tuba Shavat, the new year for trees, fourteen days away from this point, and marked by a full moon, we have a pattern that follows the logic of Passover, and other feasts that are associated with the full moon. Given that the enemy has pointed out several events that occurred over the past decade in the iPetco 2 animation, I was wondering if there were any references to Tuba Shavat in this animation that would confirm this time frame, and I believe there are, we have just never seen it before. In the classroom scene where Lily holds an apple, there are some aspects to point out because not everything occurs chronologically in this animation. But I will point out some of the aspects that have matched events that occurred recently and events that are about to occur. In this scene, Lily is positioned inside the sign of a solar eclipse. When darkness descends, we see an exodor illuminated, as well as the head of a rabbit behind Lily. September 23, 2023 was National Rabbit Day, but this was also the day on which Mohammed bin Salman, or MBS as he is also referred to, was interviewed concerning normalizing relations with Israel. And merely two weeks later, the war between Israel and Hamas broke out. And what has happened since would seem to have ruined any possibility of having peace in the Middle East. We looked for peace, but no good came, and for a time of health, and behold, trouble. Then followed the solar eclipse of October 14th, which marked the end of the 1,290 days associated with God's judgment over his church. The movie Leave the World Behind would seem to be associated with the deer that we see on the wall to the left. The movie was first released on October 25th, 2023. So there are several events from our recent past that are clearly linked to the images shown to us in this scene of the animation. This is not where it ends. Lily drops the apple, and this could be associated with the ball or the apple that is dropped in New York on New Year's Day. The apple then rolls over the floor with a light shining on it, giving the impression of what would be considered an eclipse when one looks at the shadow on the floor. We are shown around 9 or 10 revolutions which would align the splitting of the apple with the date of January 11th where we are shown a mirror image being formed by the two halves of the apple, and this mirror image that is shown to us could certainly be associated with the properties of January 11th, which is dividing God's heavenly signs into two mirror images. Once the apple splits, a water lily forms, and then we are shown how Obama is perspiring. And I think this is shown to us because those who serve the enemy know that God's judgment over the wicked is just about to start. Ask yourself this, how did the creators of this animation know about the properties of January 11th, 2024, back in 2011, when this animation was released? God's word says that our fight is not against flesh and blood, but against the powers and principalities of the air, and it is these who have long known about the properties of God's timepiece in the heavens, and have shared the information about January 11th, 2024 with the creators of this animation even though they may not have known what this imagery even means. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. 
The enemy knows exactly how to read God's watch in the heavens, and that is how they are able to convey this information to their servants. Why am I sharing this? Just as with the pandemic, which also featured in this animation, we would not have known how the enemy planned to deceive the world about an illness and pumping their propaganda and fear through the media, and would have been unprepared for what happened if we had not kept an eye on the enemy's devices, which are clearly shown to us in this animation. The Bible tells us that if we ignore the enemy, he receives an advantage over us, and therefore we have to expose the works of the enemy so that those who do not know can at least be warned. God's word also explains that there would be a certain generation where the wicked would be wiser than the children of the light, and we are certainly seeing the evidence of that, given that the enemy knows what is about to happen while many of God's children have no idea. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. And the Lord commended the unjust steward, because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. Coming back to the water lily that is shown next to Obama's shoe, this is not the only instance in which water lilies are shown to us in this animation. We see that when the Antichrist emerges into the open, several water lilies appear around him in the water, and if we count them, there are exactly 14 of them. If each water lily represents a day following January 11th, then we arrive at January 25th, or Tuba Shavat, a day on which the moon is full. What happens at this point? The church behind the Antichrist begins to crumble, and the restraint shown in the form of a barbed wire around his head is removed. Then we have an event that occurs associated with markets plunging and war coverage, associated with some form of devastation, from which ten blackbirds ascend. This could happen on or before January 25th because we see a dead boy ascending out of this destruction and this occurring on a day of a full moon, which would once again point us to January 25th or to Beshavat. This could also occur on a subsequent full moon, but given the understanding of God's word regarding to Beshavat, its association with the almond tree, which was incorporated into the menorah, and being watchful while the Lord watches over his word to fulfill it, I believe January 25th is a prime date that could mark the bride's escape from this world. Well, that is it for today. I apologize for not having a longer video for you, but I hope that the information has blessed you, and I would like to ask that you please pray for our family, as we are currently going through a very difficult time. Until next time, or until we meet in the air, God bless. Thank <laughs> you.